What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with a vintage Kenner market update, and you do not want to miss this one. There was some absolutely insane stuff that sold yesterday on eBay, and uh, stuff that you will probably never see the rest of eternity. I mean, it's just, just a wild, wild assortment. And I did include these two at the beginning because you had to see them. Uh, they're just so rare. These did not sell on Facebook, but they were, or excuse me, on eBay, but they were pulled from eBay. So I'm assuming the seller sold these away from eBay privately. Uh, I, I know the seller, Collectibles Investment Brokerage, it's run, run by Ron W. And they're affiliated with AFA. These were for sale for about a week or two. The first two I'm going to show you. So I'm assuming that uh, these did sell and, you know, maybe knock off 10% of the list price on them. So let's take a look at these first two because they are just amazing items. These are double telescoping saber figures. The first one is Darth Vader. Now, they made te double telescoping sabers where this in inner filament pulled out of the saber and th they were only made on the very, very early uh manufacturing batches and, and releases for the figures uh for the for obi-wan kenobi darth vader and luke skywalker luke is still somewhat affordable but it's expensive in high grade uh vader and kenobi are you know astronomically expensive and uh so this one was listed for fifteen thousand dollars <laughs> so that gives you an idea of just how expensive vader vader is for this and that you know they stopped making them very quickly they, they appeared in some early bird kits mail away kits and they also did appear on mint on card 12 backs 12 back a's but only for a brief time maybe six months or less of manufacturing time and i think it's probably less than that more like three months so you experts out there can correct me on all that information that i'm sharing right now but all i know is they're very very expensive and this one was listed by collectible investment brokerage for fifteen thousand. it was listed and then pulled off and i don't know if they sold it privately or not but i'm assuming that it did sell privately and maybe knock off 10 percent off that list price the more rare one is the Kenobi, and here's the, the Obi-Wan Kenobi with the double telescoping saber. I've only seen one other one sell uh, in the last few years, maybe five years, and it was an AFA-80 also, I believe, and that one sold for, I think, I'm, I'm going on memory, but I want to say it was about $28,000 on Facebook, and it sold quickly. Uh, this one was listed at $22,500. i am assuming it sold for around $20,000. Uh, but these are two of the more rare, you know, excluding things like Vlix, you know, down in uh south america some of those really rare kind of you know one in ten type of type of items uh if you're talking about standard you know very you know kenner u.s kenner production figures the double telescoping figures for for kenobi and vader are very very rare so anyway it was listed for 22.5 so i wanted to show those two first these are the only two that were not like true sales on ebay but i've got so many others that 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 were just amazing items and let's let's go ahead and go through them uh, CIB had a number of mint on cards as well as loose graded figures for sale. I'm pulling out some of the more interesting ones and the prices for, I mean, just when I think the market can't get any more crazy when it comes to vintage Kenner stuff, uh, the, the prices, and this is not one of them, by the way, this Han 21 back is, this is kind of light, right in line with the market, but I mean, some of these others that I'm going to show you later on will just, or just blow your mind. But Anyway, this was a Han 21 back B, and that one sold for $16.26 plus shipping. And honestly, that's right in line with market. I've seen a few 21 back uh, Hans in that same kind of grade range sell for as high as $1,800. So $16.26, you know, as, as high as that sounds, that's, that's really kind of in line with market. Um, this is uh, one that was a collector archive services graded one. I thought about bidding on this, but it just didn't work out for me. But this is the Survival Kit 41 back. Uh, Hoff Imperial Stormtrooper, and it was graded 80, 85, 85, overall 80 score, and that one sold for 610. Uh, my thoughts are that that one's probably right in line with market as well. Uh, you know, something a little higher grade can sell into the 800s, so, you know, a CAS 80 for that one with a clear blister, that's, that's pretty much fair market value. I don't think it's a deal, and I don't think it's, it's a ripoff either, so... Um, this is another one that popped up that was ungraded. This was a 41 back offerless yellowed blister, very slightly yellowed, but it was a Luke Farm Boy with a dark or with a darker brown hair. I don't know if that's the dark dark brown or just the brown hair. I, it's hard to tell in this photo, but uh, nevertheless, it's a, it's one of those items that that just pops up irregularly, especially at auction. And that one sold for almost a thousand bucks plus shipping. It had some light sticker residue. You know, light light wear here and there on the card, but probably an overall 80 pretty easily. You know, nice and flat, very, very light edge wear. 
and uh, you can see the sticker residue right there but uh, what an awesome item and uh, those uh, the ESB Luke's were known to have those those brown hair uh, brown hair Luke farm boys inside so what a beautiful item but anyway a thousand bucks gets you that one um, that same seller that had the Hoth 41 back had this one which is a JC Penny exclusive eight pack CAS graded 80 you can see it's got a lot of the Bespin characters with Lobot uh, Ugnot it's got the Hoth Leia the 21B Dengar the Hoth Rebel Commander, AT, AT Driver, and then the Imperial Commander. So a really awesome multi-pack that, uh, again, you know, for this to come up at auction, uh, it's just so irregularly this, this kind of stuff sh uh, shows up at auction. But anyway, it was graded 80 overall, and it sold for a big number, 2126 and change plus shipping. So uh, it, it's just hard for me to, to give you an idea of whether that's fair market value or not, just because it just comes up so irregularly. But my gut says that's probably right in line with market based on some of the other sales prices that we're going to look at here. This one surprised me a little bit. This one was a Revenge Sticker Bosk, but it had a pretty yellow blister on it. And, you know, the last real data point that I remember for this one was a clear blister that was already graded. And it was listed at 800, I believe, or it might have been 900. It's hard to remember. It's, it's been a, about six months now. Um, but that was a clear blister and it was already graded at, at it was either eight or 900. And that, this one sold for 800 ungraded with a yellow blister. So <laughs> you're getting less and less for your money as this market continues to escalate. Um, CIB also had this one. This was a really cool one. This was a loose graded glass light, uh, uh, glass light Hoth Stormtrooper. Now those were known to not, they did not come with capes. And it had a very, very bright blue uh, Stormtrooper uh, blaster rifle. So you can see how much brighter blue that rifle is than... Uh, the standard Kenner version, but uh, another item that doesn't come up regularly, and uh, this one sold for $400 plus shipping. I thought that was a great deal. You know, you can see there that's got a very, very slight yellowing to the torso, but overall, uh, really nice. And, you know, th these glass light items down in South America, they came out a little bit later. They came out in 1988 after kind of the heyday of, of the Star Wars mania had already passed in the U.S., and the Power of the Force line was kind of come and gone, but... Uh, Really awesome item. Now to go with that, a, a different seller had this one. This was the Glasslight Luke Skywalker mint on card on on the card back. So beautiful. It had the blister protection. It was only a sixty grade, but you know these Brazilian Glasslight figures just uh, they're just really cool, and they, they have the kind of generic, you know, uh, card backs for them. But man, what an awesome awesome item that is. Graded seventy five. Blister was fifty, and the figure was an eighty. Uh, the sabers were known to be really, really thick. You can see the, the tip on that yellow saber is a lot thicker. It had some kind of wear to the um, to the arm there on Luke. But man, what a what a cool item! And that price was pretty good in my opinion. Thirteen forty seven plus shipping for uh, you know a Brazilian glass light. That's that's an awesome item, really awesome item. And I think that was a very fair price. Uh, CIB also had this one, the hollow cheeks. The hollow cheeks sand people, and you know this again ties back to my to my ongoing thesis that seller or excuse me that buyers with deep pockets that want really high grade loose graded figures, and this was eighty five plus, they're gonna pay up for eighty five plus and ninety. And I've got a better example here in a little while that's gonna blow your mind. But this hollow cheeks sand people with the older cell case too, and it still sold for six sixty nine. I mean, you used to be able to buy an AFA eighty five yellow blister. Return of the Jedi with that yellow, with that, uh, it's yellow, yellow blister, but but with that hollow cheeks sand people in it. I mean, I'm talking like less than a year ago, you could get that for that same price. And and here it is, a loose graded figure selling for that. So pretty crazy. Um, now, there were a number of loose graded Boba Fetts that sold by CIB and a couple of others, but I wanted to show you these. This was an 85 plus Taiwan, just a standard Taiwan with the darker brown belt. Uh, but it was 85 plus, and you know, again, it sold for about double what an 85 would go for. An, 80, a, a, an 85 would probably sell 2, 250 to 275, and so to go from an 85 to an 85 plus, you're jumping all the way up to almost 600 dollars after shipping. So, pretty crazy there. Now, one seller had this one, a uh, different seller. This was a light blue painted head Taiwan. Now, the painted head Taiwans are very, very difficult to find. I think that they only came, and you guys can correct me on this, I think that they only came on certain Return of the Jedi card backs. And so they're, they're very, very uh, few production numbers for these. 
And, uh, and so they, they typically, I mean, even on Facebook, these can sell for $700, $700 plus ungraded. And so this one sold for $735, AFA 85. That's a very fair number, in my opinion. And uh, uh, CIB also had one. They had, it's crazy. You never see these come up for auction, these Taiwan painted head Boba Fetts. And then on the same day, we had two of them close at the exact same grade uh, at the exact same day. I mean, it's just, it blows my mind how, how the collecting market works. But anyway, this one was also an 85 light blue painted head that was also at auction by CIB. 43 bids, and that one closed a little higher. That one closed for $900. And part of that might be because of international buyers. You know, a lot of international buyers, they don't have access to uh, some of these uh, U.S. auctions. And CIB does ship internationally. So I think that that definitely uh, played a part in the in the sales price. And, you know, the photo is really nice, too. It's a very, it's, even though he only showed the front, I mean, it's a very crisp, clear photo versus this one where, you know, it's it's a little bit more shadows and things like that. So... Uh, but anyway, so seven thirty-five for one of them, AFA eighty-five, and then CIB sold one for almost nine hundred dollars. But I, I mean, honestly, beyond the photo quality, I think it really comes down to international buyers. And my guess is that there's probably an international buyer that bought that. Um, another one that CIB had was a loose graded Lily Letty Boba Fett AFA eighty, and that one has moved up pretty nicely. Uh, that one sold for ten sixty-seven uh, ninety-nine, and I, I have an eighty plus. Lily Letty with the older style case, not this new case. And I think I'm, I'm going on memory, but it was several years ago, at least three years ago, probably more like three and a half years ago. I paid seven fifty to seven eighty, somewhere in that ballpark. So you can see what it's you know the price is done. It's let's call it, it's gone up about twenty five percent for a a slight tear down in grade, but admittedly a newer case style. So um, an interesting data point there. Um, here was a, another last 17 data point that just shows you how crazy the market is. 85 plus loose graded uh, Luke Poncho. We very regularly see uh, AFA graded mint on card Luke Poncho last 17 sell in that 650 to 750 range for nice high 80, you know, AFA 80 with a yellow blister. But to get a loose graded AFA 85 plus, you're paying 610. So pretty big number there. This one takes the cake though. I was absolutely shocked at this final sales price for an AFA 90 last 17 R2D2 pop-up lightsaber. <clears throat> Look at that sales price. What is the market doing? <clears throat> 22.47 was the sales price. So uh, I'm just blown. And this is an older style case too. It's not even the updated case. But wow, what a final sales price for that one. And uh, and look, you know, I, I guess I understand it a little bit because. Even inside the blister for those R2s, they get the yellow, the sticker yellows. You know, you can have an inside the blister one grade 75 for the figure score. So I get it. So getting a, an AFA 90 as mint as it gets, last 17 R2 D2, it's one of the more expensive figures anyway. And it's, you know, with what last 17 has done, as we've seen in these videos, I mean, uh, it's just, it's hard to find this. You know, it's, it's not an item that's going to pop up regularly. No, no pun intended with pop up, but. Man, I, I'm just I'm still blown away by that price. It's just a crazy number, and uh, again, it's your money. Do what you want with it, and you're getting an awesome item. So I, I get it. It's just just a wild, wild number, though. Um, here's another one that uh, that sold that I wanted to point out. This is an SB Products Uze Turkish bootleg R5D4, and this was graded AFA 75. You can see some sticker wear there, but uh, not an item that you see very often, and um, that price, it was $1,400 listed, best offer accepted. I'm guessing, you know, $1,250 to $1,300. My buddy Trevor owned this one. This is a really, really nice item, and um, I really wanted it bad for my R5-D4 collection, but it just, you know, that that precious commodity that is money. I just didn't have it for, at the time, but uh, really nice item. I wanted to, to show a few tri logos that CIB also sold. Um, the prices definitely surprised me a little bit on the high end. Uh, this was an AFA 85 Han Solo. Uh, one less than, you know, sometime this year, earlier this year, sold for, uh, I think it was 900 or 950. Well, that same item is now selling for 1277. So you can see what the price is done there, but what an awesome item. Unpunched, beautiful example, AFA 85. Uh, this one, <laughs> this is another one that was really high. This is the the, the Leia Hoth. This was AFA 80, tri logo, and that one sold for 1750. So a big, big number for that one, but um, absolutely gorgeous item. Absolutely gorgeous. I know it's my favorite expression, but th these are definitely drool worthy kind of items. 
And finally, uh, in terms of, I think I got one more after this. Yeah, I've got a, I've got an ungraded one next. But look at this, look at this sales price. This was an AFA eighty five uh, Tie Fighter palette on the Tri logo. This is the uh, just, just an item that that is is one of the top five, maybe top ten. It's probably top ten. It, it's well within the top ten for Tri logos. It's just, just one of those ones that doesn't come up very regularly. I put it in the same class as like a Death Star droid um, or like an, uh, an Emperor Royal Guard. It's not like General Mandine or the Jawa on the Palatoy Tri logo, but it's in that next tier, that next that, that next tier of really expensive Tri logos. And uh, the price was about double what I expected the sales price to be. <laughs> uh, I was expecting kind of 1900 to 2000 and it sold for 3282 So, uh, take that for what you will but uh the, the market just continues to shock me with some of these sales prices but admittedly they were getting an afa 85 as good as it gets tri logo tie fighter palette it's 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 really beautiful i mean the only thing that would make this one better is unpunched but beggars cannot be choosers when you come to such a high grade very desirable tri logo that is is easily within the top 10 in my opinion for for rarity um and finally let's finish it off with one ungraded so you know you paid what was it? It was uh, 2247 for the standard last 17 R2-D2, admittedly an AFA-90. And you could also get the Canadian mint-on-card droids version of the pop-up R2-D2, and it, it looked great. I mean, it was a really nice, it was yellow, but it looked probably like an 85, an 85 overall, uh, maybe an 80 plus, but it looks like an 85 to me all day long, just, just giving it the cursory look. But uh, that one sold for eleven twenty six plus shipping. I thought that was a very fair price given what R two D two pop ups have done, both last seventeen and the droids version. So uh, nice to see someone get a pretty good deal. I think on that one. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this epic look at some of these loose graded and and mint on card graded and and mint on card ungraded. Just just a really awesome assortment of items that ended over the last few days and. Uh, it's just further evidence that the market continues to stay very, very strong for high-grade AFA 85 on mint on cards and then AFA 85 plus and AFA 90s on loose graded figures. They're just going to continue to, to command many multiples versus uh, you know 80s and, and ungraded. So uh, just just pretty eye-opening. Uh, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, please consider subscribing for future vintage Kenner market updates with price data. And for those of you who are existing subscribers, as well as my Patreon supporters, as always, I really appreciate the support and you guys watching. Thanks so much, and I'll be back soon.